Hello, welcome to Karma's a Stitch. This is installment eight of a little mini series that I'm doing. Um, I'm calling it a whip roundup. And I'm just kind of trying to keep myself, get myself a good idea as to where I'm at with all of my whips. Um, it gets you guys up to date where I'm at with my whips and kind of get a plan going forward. Um, if I haven't already said, my name is Tanya and you are welcome here. I'm trying to keep these installment episodes short, like right around the 10 minute mark. Some have been shorter, some have been slightly over. So with that in mind, today's might be a slightly longer one um, because I have a finished object and I wouldn't share it except for the fact that it's one that I shared. It was installment number two. The Boho Blush by Andrea Mowry. So I have it finished. Ah! Um, I'm gonna put up, so when I worked on this, um, you guys, I was telling you that I had a whole extra skein and or, and I had it caked up already and I wanted to add that to the, the size of the, the pattern. And it took me so much math. I wish I had the pattern handy like, Holy cow, I didn't realize I needed to use numbers quite so much with this knitting, but I did because there was lace and I needed to figure out how to make the lace section work with the new stitch count. Um, so when I finished, the, when I figured it out, so I'll show you, here's the finished, finished object. Don't mind the squeaky chair. And I'll turn it around because I do want a few of you to notice but there are no ends. They have all been woven in. So when I show you this, okay, so here's the size of it and it hasn't been blocked yet. Okay. But when I show you the length of this, the pattern ended right about here. Okay. So when I got here, I had a whole nother skein. And so I measured off 20, grams of um, wool from that skein. And when I say I did that, because of the fringe, it gives you how long the fringe is and how long you need to make those strands. So I just took a piece of cardboard and I just wrapped it around. And this is half the size that the instructions, the pattern says to make each piece of the fringe. So I wrapped it around, there's one. And there's two. And I did that for the number of times that it said. And I think it said, uh, I don't know, like 72 or 76, something like that. That many sets of strands for one piece of fringe. So I measured off all my fringe, which left me 80 grams of that additional cake that I had. So I had my fringe measured off, so I knew that I could then just add. So I added a little bit more of the garter ridging because I wanted the garden, garter ridging to match what it was pre previously in the pattern. And then I had to figure out this lace bit. And if you notice, up here, the lace was repeated three times. Down here, because of how much wool I was working with, I only did two repeats. Um, and then I was able to still get half of the garter stitching for the, the bit right before the fringe was added. So this added so much size because what I ended up doing, I mean, because if you look at those edges of the fringe, I mean, they're about an inch apart maybe even a little bit more. And in the pattern, whatever that number was, she said that she put them about an inch apart. Well, when I finished and I bound off the edge and I did a really stretchy bind off and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, when I finished this, the bind off, I had a tiny little nugget left and I'm so glad that I did because I ended up winding that on um, onto this cardboard for extra pieces of fringe. 
all right? And because I just wasn't sure how much I was going to need. And I had this time, and I'll put a picture if I haven't already, of the little size that I had left. And I added it to the fringe. So then once I had the fringe all here and I, my project was bound off, I went through and I cut right along this edge because it looped around and I just cut right along this edge. And that gave me my strand at the full length. And it was, it was lovely. I had lots of magenta hair in my hand. Um, and I was able to, and I ended up with 97. There are 97 little fringes in this, in this shawl or wrap, whatever you want to call it. So I, I am so pleased. I'll put it on for you. I'm sorry about the squeaky chair. So I wore it at the yarn shop yesterday. Let's see if I can, and I'll turn around so you can see it. Like it is just beautiful. I mean, the wingspan of this is longer than my arms by probably two feet. I haven't measured it yet because I haven't blocked it, but I love it. I am just so happy with how this turned out. Um, I'm pleased with the, the pattern was written beautifully. I wanted to add more and it was easy enough. I say easy enough. Um, I'm, I'm sure I made it more complicated than it needed to be in all actuality. <laughs> so yes, the boho blush, which was installment number two is finished and I will be blocking that. So there's that. So we are going to talk about the whip for today. Um, just like yesterday's episode or installment, um, it is also done by Aspen Knits. I'm kind of embarrassed to call this a whip. Um, and I'll show you why in a minute. I'm sure some of you are guessing. But it's called the Slipstream. Um, it's designed by Aspen Knits. Here's a picture. Uh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm going to show you another picture which has some of the stitch definition a little bit better. And because it had all the different stitch patterns, I thought it would keep my interest. And it is great. It, it's written for minis. It's written for two, five mini packs. Oh. There's Alex. Give me one minute. She came in to see your puppy. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> I am so sorry about that. Uh, so yes, it is written for two packs of five 20 gram minis. So five 20 gram minis, five 20 gram minis, 10, 10 minis total. I'm sure that's clear as mud. I'm terribly sorry. Um, so yes, and it, it tells you to put them in order how you want them, which I've done. I've, and I used these little cords and I laid them all out and I decided what order I wanted them in. And if you notice, this is only eight of them. Because here are the other two. And I'm sure I should probably tell you what yarn this is. I'm, I believe this is um, Blue Savannah because she was having a trunk show while Aspen Knits had her display of all of her patterns. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that this is Blue Savannah. But here is my issue with calling this a whip. Yay me. That's, that's my progress right there. So, I'm sure I'm gonna love it. I love a wrap. It's done on a US 5, and I am using my Chow Gu um, 16 inch. Is that clear? I don't know that it's, 
But yes, so it's a three page pattern. It's, you're repeating a few things um, throughout the entire length of it. I'm terribly excited to do it. I just don't know, it, again, this is one that I forgot that I had cast on. So it is, it is now seeing the light of day again. And hopefully it'll go quick because this is the type of pattern. The rows are short. It's a wonderful repeat and I'm changing colors. I have no, I, no doubt in my mind that once I get going on this, it is not going to take long. And her patterns are written so well. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. So that is the slipstream stitch pattern, or the slipstream, um, slipstream designed by Aspen Knits. My project page is up on Ravelry. Um, yes, that is all. It's all like that. I wish I had more. Is this even a whip? <laughs> I mean, it's on the needles. Is this even a whip, you guys? Let me know what you think. All right. See you later.